for finite volume, we don't store the nodal values. What do we store? What do we do in finite? Yeah, the average. So we split the domain into cells. We can use the same grid points, but the, the numbers just represent different things. The numbers will represent the average value in between these grid points. So this will be finite volume, right? And then I realized we never talked about how do you solve Poisson's equation using finite volume. So today maybe we should talk about that a little bit, right? If you have a second order spatial derivative, how do you use finite volume? So remember, what do we do in finite volume? What is the first thing we do in finite volume? I mean, in finite difference, the first thing is to look at every operator that has derivatives and approximate it, right? In finite volume, that's not what we do. What do we do? Take the integral of this equation, right? So let's do that. So we, we integrate this equation over an arbitrary domain, a and b, plus f dx equal to 0, right? So for this equation to be true, this integral has to be equal to 0 for any a and b. OK, so after we integrate it, what we found is that the first term becomes the derivative of u at a and b, then plus the integral a uh, of f is equal to 0. So again, you find a volume. We want to know, we, we started with f, so we know the cell average of f. That's usually what we how do we use the right-hand side. OK, but then the problem seems to become different because now the flux, the flux is no longer just a function of u. The flux is now a derivative of u. Right, so previously we said in final volume we have derivative of f of u dx is equal to zero, or, or, or is equal to something, right? Or, or we have a time derivative, it's the same. But like the flux only involves, the flux is a function of u. Here, the flux is actually a derivative of u. So we have the problem of approximating the derivative of u at a grid point using only the volume averages. Right, in studying finite volume, we have studied how do we approximate the value of u at the interface using the cell averages. We did the central scheme, which is just averaging the two averages. It turns out to be okay if you don't have discontinuities, and if you have discontinuities, we have to do good enough solvers, we have to upwind, right, and we have to do flux limiters if we uh, want a second order scheme. So here, we want to approximate not the function value, not the flux, but the derivative of the function at the interface. So how did we approximate anything in finite difference, finite volume? How, well, how did we approximate, the, how do we get, come up with this one in finite difference? Taylor series analysis, right. So here we do the same thing, we do Taylor series analysis. So let's say I have, a, uh, I have two cells, they don't have to be equal in size. So this is my interface, I, let's stick to the finite volume notation, this is i plus half. This is cell i, this is cell i plus one. Then I want to expand my u using Taylor series analysis, my, this is the u at i plus half plus uh, my delta x, delta x is the difference between x and uh, the interface times du dx at i plus half plus half of delta x squared d square u dx squared at i plus half, etc. Right? This is my Taylor series. And with that Taylor series, I can compute what is the cell average values, what is my ui, which is defined in finite volume as the x integration from x i plus half to integration to x i plus two third. So this is i plus two third of u dx. 
divided by delta x i plus one. Well, sorry, this is i plus one, right? U i would be e equal to integration from delta x i from integration of x i minus half to x i plus half of the same quantity, right? So this is this is the definition of the uh, of the cell average values in finite volume. Just to, to remind you what finite volume is about. Okay, and now we integrate each term. So the first term after being this averaged is actually equal to just the ui plus half, right? No surprise, it's a constant term. It doesn't depend on x. The average of a constant is a constant. The second term, you are averaging a linear function. So average of a linear function is the value of the function at the middle of the point, uh, of the cell. So it's half of delta x times uh, this, right? Okay, and uh, uh, then let me just uh, say etc. Of course, you can you can do more terms. You want if you want to figure out if you either want to get a high order scheme or you want to quantify how much error you are introducing. So uh, doing the same integral on the left hand side of the interface, which is the cell i, is going to get me the same constant term, but the linear term is going to be. So this is i delta i plus one. This is minus of delta x i over 2 times the same derivative, right? So this is just applying Taylor series on the function value and just average it according to the definition of finite volume. So now we want to approximate this value, which is common these two terms. What do we do? Of course, we just subtract them to get rid of this term, right? And then the subtraction of this term with this term is going to get me the derivative. So let me just write it down. Ui plus 1 minus Ui is just going to get me half of delta xi plus delta xi plus 1 times the derivative I want. So, yes? Uh, what did you do to get the delta x over 2 and the negative delta x over 2? I integrated the first term in the Taylor series expansion and divided by the length of this integral. The first term is not a function of x, right? It's not a function of delta. So so x x is equal to x i plus half plus delta x. <laughs> so delta x is the distance between where I'm evaluating my function uh, from the interface. So so the first term is not a function of x. So when I integrate it over the domain from x i plus half to x i plus two third, uh, the size of which is the size of the uh, the cell i plus one. Okay, then I divide by the size delta x i plus one. I get the constant term itself. Yeah, delta x i plus one and x i terms get uh, divided out by the or one over delta x i plus one. Oh yes, yes, right. So I actually forget to divide it by here. So I actually have a, uh, wait, no, 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 this, uh, this, this is not, this is, this didn't get divided. So, so, uh, so this is a, this is a function that has delta x in it. This delta x is different from the delta x i plus one, right? Delta x i plus one is just a number. This delta x actually varies from zero to delta x i plus one as my x go from this interface to the next interface. So, so here I'm averaging this linear function over a domain. And the average of a linear function is always the value of the linear function at the midpoint. Right. And this is the value of the linear function at the midpoint. Does it make sense? Which part is confusing? Yeah, yeah. We, we just, uh, we just uh, neglected the last term and just to say it is order of delta x squared. Right, and this is also plus order of delta x squared. All right, so then we can see that a first order approximation of the derivative is at an interface i plus half is just equal to 
ui plus 1 minus ui divided by half of delta xi plus delta xi plus 1. Or this is the distance between the two cell centers. Right. So this is the most straightforward way to approximate flux in finite volume that involves derivatives. Just to use Taylor series expansion to figure that out. Okay, so the key thing we want to discuss is uh, uh, we ended up having the difference between two derivatives, okay, plus a average of a known function is equal to zero. So basically what I have is du dx at i plus half minus du dx at i minus half plus my fi, which is the cell average of f over the cell i times delta xi is equal to zero, right? So that's exactly what this equation is. Right, so uh, uh, this is what this equation is applied to a cell, right? So finite volume is about applying the integral form of an equation over every individual cell, right? So when a is equal to x i minus half, b is equal to x i plus half, this equation becomes this one, okay? And then we use the approximation we derived previously. Every derivative over an interface is just the, the difference between the two cell averages. Right? So this is basically ui plus 1 minus ui divided by half of delta xi plus delta xi plus 1. And this is ui minus ui minus 1 divided by xi minus half plus xi over half. So can somebody look at this equation and see what kind of matrix do we get if we represent it in matrix form? Again, yes, it is tri-diagonal because every equation involves ui plus 1, ui, and ui minus 1, right? So again, we get a equation with three unknowns, or we get a matrix with three, at most three, if you don't consider the boundaries, and most are three non-zero terms per row of the matrix. So again, we get a sparse matrix. All right. And the same thing goes in multiple dimensions. The same thing goes if you have a, a, not just a derivative, but also a flux that depends on the solution u. You pretty much uh, um, get essentially the same sparsity pattern as finite difference, is except for the definition of the variables are different, right? So, so for finite difference, I think the proper way to write it is a, is a stencil would be like this because each grid point has, let's say, five neighbor grid points. That's in 2D finite difference. In finite volume, that's the proper way to draw it, right? Each volume actually have four uh, neighbors, right? So this, is, this would be how you would draw a stencil in finite difference. This is how you draw it in final volume. 